I'm Josh Barnes. This is Justin Barnes. Thanks for joining us here on Point of View. This is the show where we're unashamed to look at political, social, cultural, and theological issues from a biblical worldview. Now, as Christians, th that just should be assumed. But it's not, and it can't be. You cannot assume that when you meet a Christian that they're going to hold political stances um, that are based on a biblical worldview. Now, we, we're going to look at some Christians today, uh, quote-unquote Christian, um, preachers who um, are coming out in support of this, actually just, not just support, like these, these people are celebrating and making their whole church service about Ketanji Brown Jackson, who is the new justice of the Supreme Court. Let me just say up front, we are not surprised that Ketanji Brown Jackson got through and is going to be, uh, is the newest justice on the Supreme Court. Of course not. The Democrats uh, control the House and the Senate. They uh, control the presidency. Um, there, there was no way that anything Joe Biden nominated, anyone Joe, Joe Biden nominated, wasn't going to um, be, uh, you know, get through. So that's that's not a surprise. But uh, what is, which again is not a surprise, but should be shocking to us, is the response from Christians from the pulpit uh, in, in churches all across our country is a overwhelmingly uh, positive response from, from, from many pulpits, right? N not from every pulpit, probably not from most pulpits. I would hope that it's not from most. But this just goes to show the wokeism that has crept into America's pulpits. And uh, hey, look, we're here to respond to that and to fight back against that. So um, Justin, your, your initial thoughts about uh, Ketanji Brown-Jackson before we play you some of these woke preacher clips from, by the way, woke preacher clips on YouTube. You can go look up the channel. Awesome channel. Has some great resources. Um, just kind of awake, warning the rest of the church about how much wokeism and, and wokeness is coming, creeping into churches. Um, but before we get to those clips, Justin, any your, your initial thoughts here on the uh, uh, Ketanji Brown-Jackson. I just want to start calling her KBJ. Um uh, what are your thoughts on her being nominated? <clears throat> well, I um, the thing I've thought this whole time is the same thing I saw reflected on Jordan Peterson's Twitter today, and it's something along the lines of, um, apparently the first black female um, judge has been appointed to the Supreme Court. Not that we know what that means, uh, but it's a historic moment. Whatever a female is, she one of them got to the court. Whatever that is. <laughs> So, and uh, and I I would venture a guess that the same people who are going to be celebrating this from the pulpit, and I haven't seen the video clips, that you're going to just back the dump truck up and unload on me here. But my guess is that the same people that are going to be in these clips probably also couldn't define what a woman is either. Yes. Um, well, actually, there, that is a separate set of clips that I did not... Um, that I did not prepare for today, but you guys can go to Woke Preacher Clips on YouTube. You can actually find them also on Facebook, and um, and you can find there's actually a whole Woke Preacher um, montage of 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 preachers trying to defend the what is a woman question and and the answer that she gave, and I did not include that in this because I have so many of them. Um, woke preacher clips has been working overtime the last, the last seven days. So, um, but that is another interest. I'm, it's interesting that you brought that up. It's a, to be fair, Fox news doesn't even know what a woman is these days. So, eh. right. Uh, even Fox news has, uh, who is it? Caitlin Jenner, um, Bruce, yep. Bruce Jenner, the, the dude, the dude who wants to be a, a girl. Um, sadly, there's not just one of them in America. You would think they're in, in a country with only in a sane society. 323 million people you'd think that there wouldn't be more than maybe one of those but uh um anyway that, that's we're, we're off we're off so let's let's jump right in well this is um okay we'll, we'll start with probably the most silly ones and uh and then we'll work towards some of the deeper ones that try to use uh scripture passages to to justify their position uh i'll introduce who this is later let me just let me just roll the clip and uh and see your response in the confirmation of Judge Brown Jackson, I wish I had a witness here. 
sister got a real black name, and her last name is Jackson. Can you help me thank the Lord that a black woman is getting ready to be on the Supreme Court? And I start to tell somebody that she's not going to be there because of affirmative action. She's not going to be there because she's a token Negro. But she's going to be there because her gift made room for her. Home girl is more qualified than all of them white folks on the board combined. I'm here to tell somebody that your gift will make room for you. But if your gift starts making room, haters gonna hate. But you got to remember they are haters. But you a baller. Haters gonna hate. But ballers gonna ball. Cause if God is for you, it's better than the world against you. So they started throwing darts at her. Started talking crazy at her. Trying to bring up things about a book. About babies being anti-racist. Thank you, white man. Thank you, Republican. For doing what you did, Rubio. Because you drove home girls' book sales. Sky high. What the devil meant for evil, God will turn it around for your good. But I got to leave you when I tell you this one last thing. What blessed me this week was a preacher by the name of the Reverend Dr. Cory Booker. In response to all of that foolishness that the GOP tried to throw at Supreme Court Justice Brown Jackson, Cory Booker looked homegirl in the face and said, don't you get it twisted. You earned this spot and you are worthy. And the Lord told me to tell you this morning, I don't care of the mistakes you made. I don't care about your past. You earned the gift and you are worthy. You're worthy to be blessed, worthy to be gifted. Worthy to be anointed, worthy to be appointed, worthy to be elevated, worthy to be elevated. If you hear me, if you believe the words that I'm saying. All right, that's enough. Um, let me just say that this. That was way too much. If you, if you go to a church where this is what you're getting from the pulpit, leave. Leave. I don't care if it's in support of, of a Democrat or a Republican or what. Run away from that church as fast as you can. And certainly don't donate another cent of your money to that organization. Let me, let me point out yeah. just a couple things. No, no, go, go ahead, Justin. Have I, I just wanted to say, uh, so do you want to know what idolatry looks like? That was it. That was idolatry. Absolutely idolatry. And there's plenty more we could get into on the specifics, but that's just my, my, my overall take on that. Yeah, that's idolatry. He's a pagan. And, and, and Justin, defend that. What? Why would you say that that is idolatry? For, for someone because who that's the disagree. house of the Lord. That is where the saints have, supposedly, the saints have gathered to communally worship God together, to lift his name high, to anoint, uh, well, to, uh, to, to gather together to, to take the you know, to, to partake in baptism, the Lord's Supper, to offer their sacrifice of praise to the Lord, to receive the word that he has given to his people, which comes from his word, and not a lick of that. Now, he tried to, he's trying to quote Proverbs 18, the gift has made room for them, but outside that, this is not a lick about what God has done or anything like this. This is a man worshiping a woman. This is a man worshiping an ideology, leftism. This is a man who is worshiping every single thing except God. That is idolatry. Yeah. And and really, he's doing what most prep pastors will take and, and do a feel-good sermon like this from a, a story out of the scripture, which I'm not, in, in most cases, are actually in support of that either. But he, that's at least better than taking a feel-good, making a feel-good sermon out of a story from politics, right? <laughs> from, the, from our country rather than from the Bible. I mean, at least, you know, grounded it in the scripture. Here's two things that... Uh, one big thing that I thought jumped out at me that I thought was huge out of this video. He says, 
I don't care about your past. You have earned this pot, this spot and you are worthy. Hold on. You have earned this spot. It suggests something about their past. If you don't care about their past, then you don't care if they've earned the spot. They haven't, they haven't actually earned it. Oh, and here's the reason that why you've earned it, no matter what you've done in the past, and he's, he's applying this to the lives of his listeners. No matter what you've done in the past, no matter how you've lived your life, you have earned X because you are worthy. Okay, this is the opposite of the gospel. This is the op opposite of, of all of the scripture, really. We have not earned salvation or, or the blessings of God or any good thing at all. All that we have earned is judgment from God uh, for our sins, right? This is what we've earned. We are not worthy. That's the point. And yes, we must run to Christ and we can have salvation. And he, um, he then gives us his righteous record. But that's not, again, because it's not because we're worthy. And, and this idea that, that he, 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 he uses on Katanji Brown Jackson is really, this is why I want to do this one first, because all of these preachers are going to kind of have this, have this idea that because she's black and because she's a woman, she is more qualified than anyone else to be in that spot. It, and he even said that. He said, You're, she's more qualified than all of the other white men up there combined, which is nonsense. First of all, they've been on the Supreme Court before, and she hasn't. I mean, they're on the Supreme Court now, so that makes them more qualified to continue to be on the Supreme Court than anyone who, who wants to be on the Supreme Court. She has not been a judge for all that long. She, she doesn't have a ton of tenure. Yes, she graduated from an Ivy League school with, oh, I think, magna cum laude, but that doesn't mean that she's more qualified than all of the people on the Supreme Court put together. I would venture to guess that most of them, uh, that all of them actually uh, graduated from Ivy League schools, and most of them probably were near the top of their class. So the, being graduating from a nice school and being the top of your class does not make you more qualified. And um, so <laughs> this is just absolute nonsense. But, but, the, but the goal here, of, and you're going to find this as a theme for all of these teachers, is, that, is to say that because of who she is, she is worthy and she is qualified. Mm -hmm. And then they make the application to people, to, to their listeners, you are worthy and you are qualified no matter what you've done because you've earned it, even though you didn't do anything. And that's the opposite of what earning means. Um, they, they've taken and redefined the word earn, kind of like they do with women, uh, the word woman. And uh, yeah, what, they, what they've come out, out with is just a, a bunch of nonsense. If, you're, if your pastor is preaching a bunch of nonsense in the pulpit, then leave. Yeah. And two things. First of all, all the white people on the court, I guess Clarence Thomas just isn't a thing. Um, but anyway, secondly, if you want to talk about idolatry here, he has said, you, he said, you earned it, you deserve to be blessed. I don't know if you understand how weighty a theological assertion that is. What do I mean? What does it mean? Where do blessings come from? They God. come from God. If you are, if you deserve something, it means you are owed it because you have done something that, that means that there is now this, this owing to you. If blessings come from God and you deserve blessings, you are making the claim God owes you. If you're in a church that can make that kind of a claim, leave. Like Josh said, leave. This man doesn't care about theology, doesn't care about who God is, doesn't care about his holiness or his righteousness or his the fact that he owes us nothing or the fact that all we like sheep have gone astray, we've turned everyone to his own way and the Lord hath laid on him, Christ, the iniquity of us all and that it is through his merit that we don't go to hell and burn for eternity. It's because of his merit that we have any blessing. It's because we are in Christ, but it's not because we deserve anything. I deserve nothing. It's through Christ, my high priest, that I can enter boldly to the throne of grace. This man is an idolater. Yeah. Well, he is, he, everything he said is straight idolatry. Yeah. And, and ultimately it's this, you know, it's, it's, he's itching the ears of his congregation, right? He's, he's, he's giving them what, what he knows is going to make them excited and make them happy. And that is you deserve to be blessed. 
But you know what? Um, a good preacher is going to preach the truth. It doesn't really matter what his congregation wants to hear. Um, here's another bad preacher. Um, uh, by the way, the, that uh, last one was, um, I don't have the name of, of the gentleman. Uh, the the uh, church was the Historic Myrtle Baptist Church, and that's their name on YouTube if you want to look them up on YouTube and kind of dig a little deeper into them. The Historic Myrtle Baptist Church uh, from YouTube is where we got that. Here is the next one, and we most certainly will not play all of this one, but uh, but I wanted you to you get a feel for, for what's being said um, from this pulpit. The Congress of this American empire tried in every way to crucify this black woman, tried in everybody to co commit a modern day lynching on the platform for everyone to see. They crucified, belittled, berated, humiliated, and insulted a black woman who was nominated for justice on the highest court of the land. But I'm glad to report every black woman should be swaying this morning. Every black woman ought to have a little sway in your shoulders. Because this sister, she never bowed. She never wilted. She held her poise. She was cool. She was calm. She was collected. I could hear her saying, still I rise. Her demeanor was exquisite. Her grace was under pressure personified. Say her name. Katanji Brown Jackson. Say her name. Katanji Brown Jackson. Say her name. I don't hear nobody. She belongs to us. When I looked at her, that is also idolatry. And uh, a little bit of uh, brainwashing as well. Um, say her name, Katanji Brown Jackson, uh, leading the church in a chant of the name of a human being, glorifying men rather than God. This is, yeah, this is idolatry, the, it, it, right in the middle of, of a church service. Yeah, well, it's not really a church service. <laughs> That's fair not a church. Um, that's not a gathered body of believers in Christ because this man just compared Kentonji Brown Jackson to Christ. Mm -hmm. He was talking about them trying to crucify her very clearly, trying to compare her to actual God in human flesh. I would not want to answer for that in Judgment Day. By the way, um, it's amazing how how people apparently don't know what the word lynching means. because That was one of the notes I wrote down. Saying You're it's a modern, <laughs> they're, they're trying to do this public modern lynching. Lynching was killing people by mob violence. Uh, yeah. Not trying to vet somebody to make sure they're qualified for the job. Like, does this man think every job interview is a lynching? You know, the because funny thing they asked her questions relevant to her job or what the job she was trying for. That's not lynching. Yeah. By the way, before I forget, that this was Pastor Ira J. Aker, or Acre, of Chicago's Greater St. John Bible Church. Um, but did you hear any of the Bible in that Bible church meeting? No. As a matter of fact, the people seemed very excited about something completely unrelated to the Bible. But what's interesting to me is that he called it a modern-day lynching, which, of course, assumes that there aren't real lynchings in our modern day there this is this is the lynching that we have in modern day and yet joe biden just recently signed a bill banning uh lynchings which means <laughs> joe biden thinks lynchings still happen like the the real lynchings um so uh <laughs> it's just funny that he calls it a modern day lynching admitting that lynchings don't happen and biden's one wonderful achievement um was completely pointless and, and useless. Um, <laughs> okay, so these are disturbing, right? Th these are disturbing things. Uh, one of the things that uh, both of these men, actually, I didn't, I didn't want to finish uh, Pastor, um, Pastor Ira's uh, 
message because it wasn't a message. It was it was just a chant. But both of them end up talking about Cory Booker and, and how wonderful Cory Booker was. Jo- uh, Justin, did you see the Cory Booker comments, uh, w- what he said um, in that last s- several minutes when he was talking to uh, Katanji Brown Jackson there before her com- If you're referring to the point, part where he goes, you know, God's got you, you know, and all that. Yes, I, I saw that. Yeah, so he didn't use a whole lot of scripture and I kind of I can play it for you guys uh, but it's it's just going to waste our time I think. Basically he he had a pre- clearly prepared speech uh ready that um that he he went into and and Cory Booker is pretty good with this sort of like a emotional every single time he gets up to speak it's this giant emotional end of the world thing. Um, and so if you've ever seen Cory Booker before, you know, this wasn't genuine, but everyone's talking about it. Like it's super genuine. And, and, and he comes down to the conclusion at the end, God's got you. And he keeps talking about them be, being so, uh, that, that God is behind this, that God is for you, that God is allowing you to go forward. But here's, here's the big question I want to bring up. Number one, this, this lady is embarrassed to even define what a woman is, even though God made them male and female right so so that should be easy if god is really for her right you know she can't even say that god is for her uh but yet she is the the one who's giving uh rapists and and child molesters the absolute minimum sentence possible um and and even some would argue even below what should what what um what 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 was really right rightful um, this is not something that, that strikes me as godly. And beyond all of that, we talked about this in the last couple episodes, um, with, uh, when, I, when I, Jonathan was on here talking about the, the DC abortion clinic and, and the horrors of, of hundreds of dead baby bodies being packed into, into the back of a truck and taken off to an incinerator that would then power and provide electricity for some, some place. Um, the horrors of this and and the the murders that are taking place in our country, Katanji Brown Jackson supports those things. She is for continuing legalized abortion in this country. How is that something God is behind? God does not have her. No, no. God is not is not rooting her on with these types of things. Um, no. Here's the thing. I could tell Katanji Brown Jackson that God's got her, but it would be in a sinners in the hands of an angry God kind of way. Because the fact that you are in the hands of God, you are either in his hand and and in Christ's hand and he in the Father's hand in that secure way that um, no man will escape the grip of God on the soul of his people, you know, that, that Christ will not lose his own. Um, you, and I think Josh and I both agree, you can't lose your salvation, that sort of thing. Um, but there's a flip side to this in that God does not forget anything that the wicked do, whatever she does. And this is actually, there's, um, there's a great song that I've been really encouraged by a lot lately. Um, it's called uh, Jesus, What a Wonderful Name. The second verse says, All the great leaders who sleep in their grave one day will bow and proclaim that he's Lord of all glory, the crown king of kings. All creation will thunder his name. The fact of the matter is, Christ is going to hold them accountable for everything they do. Yeah. This woman who is now on the court, every action she takes, God has her. And he will hold her accountable for it. But it's not a comforting God has you. You ought to be very, very circumspect when you understand the weight of what you're doing. Because God does have you. Yeah. Well, and Cory Booker, uh, we could play the whole thing. It, it, it's just so long and it just it would be pointless. You guys can go check it out. It's all over the internet. Just look up Cory Booker and um, Katanji Brown Jackson. You'll find it. Um, but uh, Cory Booker... Um, was trying to make the argument that God has her the same way that he has the Chinese Americans who were basically yeah. slave labor forced to uh, forced to build the railroad. P- 
paid slaves, of course. Um, and, uh, and, you know, just like he had the Irish Americans who came over here and America didn't love them. And just like he, just like he has the LGBTQ Americans, like it's clear that the context in which he is saying this is just throwing God in as, as a higher power, not actually speaking about the God of the Bible who disapproves of, of, of LGBTQ and uh, disapprove is not really the right word. He condemns it and will judge it one day. Um, and, and, and other things as well. Um, but yeah, so the context with which he was saying this is, um, is, is in question. Here is one, one little clip that I will play where he, where Corey did use uh, a, a passage of scripture. And other, other than that, this is the only real, um, place to play from, from this, uh, from this interview. Um, it's not really an interview. It's just a, supposed to be a question, but he wasn't really asking questions. Any one of us senators could yell as loud as we want that Venus can't return a serve. We could yell as loud as we want that Beyonce can't sing. We could yell as much as we want that astronaut Mae Jamison didn't go all that high. But you know what? <laughs> they got nothing to prove. As it says in the Bible, let the work I've done speak for me. Well, you... Who was that about? That was Jesus talking about himself who came and worked miracles to prove that he truly was the Messiah that he claimed to be. And he says, I don't need to claim to be the Messiah. All you got to do is look at what I've done and you can see I'm the Messiah. Okay. And so um, this is again, absolute downright heresy taking the words of Christ and applying them to Katanji Brown Jackson. Justin, we've got about 60 seconds. Yeah, and I'll since you you took the idolatry route again, and you hit that nicely, which is correct. That is again idolatry. I'll just say um, Venus Williams could not return Andy Roddick's serve. Uh, you know why? She's a woman, but Katanji Brown Jackson wouldn't know that. Now, for our next clip, we have actually one video. All of these again come from woke preacher clips on YouTube. You guys can go check it out. It's. Uh, it's a great resource if you're looking to, to actually have your eyes opened about how much terrible, awful garbage is being taught and preached in church services by supposed Christian pastors. Um, anyway, the next clip is a montage, so we'll we'll stop um, every time it it changes. But these are preachers who are, are comparing the Katanji Brown Jackson. Uh, nomination and and her her being attacked by republicans uh to the woman who is caught in adultery in what is it what is it john 11 no john no john not, not i believe it's john 7 john 7 Let me i think that's correct it's yeah. either john 7 or 8 i believe um 7 because it rhymes with 11 that's why i thought it was 11 um <laughs> anyway so there i think there's three different preachers in here that um that it's we're eight, gonna... the beginning of eight that was right because okay. the, the the discussion usually around that text itself in a different context is starts in seven and goes through eight sorry go ahead right. okay but anyway yeah you're right because because really eight continues it, it's a little out of place that uh um the the story as far as if you're following the the flow of what john is saying um the uh, let's let's go to these preachers. So the preacher, we're going to actually break down each each argument here because they're actually going to be using scripture, and we're going to ask: Are they rightly using scripture, or is this the type of church that's twisting and perverting scripture to make their point, which you should probably consider leaving? And uh, really, so far, all the churches, that, all the clips that we've seen, we're going to highly recommend you leave that church, <laughs> get out, find a real church, um, and and. We'll, we'll reserve our judgment till after we've heard. Justin hasn't heard these coming preachers. So here we go. Here's the first one. Um, here we go. I couldn't help but think of Jesus uh, last week as I watched the Senate confirmation hearings with uh, Judge uh, Katanji Brown Jackson. Now, I don't know if you got a chance to listen to, but particularly also to watch some of the proceedings. Uh, and while some of the senators uh, really seem to be asking honest questions to discern, you know, does this person deserve a place on the highest court in the land? We know that some other senators were just literally asking questions to try to trap her. And I don't know if you saw her responses, but I loved how she would pause, breathe deeply, 
put on the half smile that we've been taught to put on and then respond. And so I figure that whatever she was thinking of during those moments is what Jesus was writing on the ground. And they kept asking. Okay, we'll stop there. Um, <laughs> now, we don't know. We, we do not know what Jesus was writing on the ground. Um, of course, there, we'll, we'll stay away from, you know, if, if you're super informed on, on theology and all that kind of stuff, you know, there's, there's debate over, over whether this, this por- portion of John is original and all that. We're, just gonna, we're not even going to go there, okay? We're just going to say, in church, you're preaching through John. You get to John 8, the woman caught in adultery, which I'm sure is not why he was in John 8. But uh, he was going to John 8 because he was trying to tie it in with this. Is this a fair way to uh, to preach John 8? To say that whatever it is that Katanji Brown Jackson was thinking when she was being attacked is what Jesus was thinking. Remember that Jesus wasn't, well, I mean, indirectly he was under attack. But this was this was really about attacking a woman who had been caught in adultery Um How does that, that doesn't even like logically tie together that they would be thinking the same things. Okay. So granting for the sake of the discussion that this, you know, the, the discussion of textual variants and all that sort of stuff aside, um, maybe we'll get there some other day, but not the conversation today. So granting that this is, um, scripture, like anything else, I think the point he's making is that they were trying to trap Jesus. Um, they were trying to. To, to trap him like the Pharisees often do. Right. So just like they were trying to trap Jesus, they were trying to trap Katanji Brown Jackson. And when Jesus stoops down and writes in the sand in the narrative um, and then lifts his eyes and and uh, says, you without uh, sin cast the first stone, they're saying that he's he's trying to say that that pause that Katanji Brown Jackson would, would do was the same as Jesus taking a moment to write in the sand. Now, I have no idea how you get there from here, um, especially since, because when I saw the pause, I thought she stumped. Because you know when I saw the pause? Could you define a woman for me? Um, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm no, no, not no, no, a, no, a biologist. No, 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 it wasn't that. Was it, wasn't that. It, was, it was, it was, I'm sorry, uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she even scratched her head like uh, like she was yeah. embarrassed by the question. Jesus did not say, "I'm sorry, could uh, I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a theologian. I can't answer the question. I'm not a doctor of the law. I can't answer the question on what to do with a woman in adultery." No, <laughs> that's not what happened. Uh, so to make this comparison, his once again straying towards idolatry, and I'm seeing a theme here, by the way. Yeah, and it's pretty well generally agreed that Jesus was not thinking um, that he was angry at them. He wasn't trying to, to temper his anger towards them or anything like that. In, instead, he was he was either writing their sins or maybe he was writing the Ten Commandments or something to show that they were lot condemned of, as a well. A lot of people, just just for the sake of discussion here again, a lot of people who do accept this as, um, as a, a biblical, uh, an original passage from John, believe that Jesus was writing the commandment whereby the man and the woman in Deuteronomy 22 were supposed to be brought to be put to death, not just the woman. So they, they, they'll highlight the fact that it's just the woman who's taken an adultery. So Jesus is probably calling them out for some sort of imbalance in their at, uh, application of God's law, something yeah. like that. Right. He's not, which, uh, which if Katanji Brown Jackson was thinking that she should have just brought it up and said it. Um, <laughs> Anyway, by anyway, the way, it has was, nothing to do with the text, if that's what you're wondering. That was from St. Anselm's Abbey. Uh, that's the church. This next clip is from uh, a mass at Spiritus Christi. And you can find these, actually, you can find the, the videos on YouTube, at their, on their YouTube channel. Here is the lovely argument that we have next. Jesus was writing on the ground. This was the, this was and the they kept one. asking her... Why did you only give him three months in jail for his crime? Why did you do that? So she explained that the way the court makes its decision about sentencing is it depends on other people besides herself. She has to depend upon, for example, the parole officer and other committees, and they sit together for weeks and they go over the situation to see 
who this person is and what other crimes did they commit in the past, etc., etc. And what happened was she said that looking at this situation with this 18-year-old and discussing it for weeks with groups of other people, I came to the decision that this was the best sentence for him. They disapproved. So we do still live in a time where, of course, we have to interpret the law. But what she said was, I have to take into consideration many factors when I make a sentence. Sometimes I follow the recommendations of three years to 20 years. She said, sometimes I go below and sometimes I go above. But she said, in this particular case, I decided to give the lesser sentence. An interpretation of the law based upon the factors of the person, of the person involved. So here we see Jesus making this decision about this woman and saying to them, if you have not sinned, throw the first stone at her. I meant to say this Sunday. <sighs> okay, so, uh, so much to respond to in this one. She is- He just made that mystery, by the way. You know that, right? He just made that up. That was not her response. Yeah. Her response was that back when this rule, back when the sentencing guidelines were given for this type of crime, porn was, uh, child porn was so much less accessible. You had to order it online. So there was a lot more hoops you had to jump through in order to get your hands on it. So it was geared towards that. So sentencing nowadays is, should look different. Her, it, it wasn't about, you know, what they've done in the past. No, no. Her answer was that the, the sentencing guidelines are outdated. Yeah. he just made this up well he's he's trying well and a lot of a lot of preacher you'll you'll find and not you but i'm talking to the audience at this point you know this just you'll find that a lot of preachers make stuff up it's mm -hmm. this is why this is why when preachers are not preaching the scripture you can't open your bible and check them so they they will often make stuff up they just become like joe biden telling stories um and that's pretty much what this guy was doing but even if if this was correct his argument for her uh, for her judgment in this case is that, well, it wasn't really her fault. She was just following all the recommendations she was given. She's trying to become, or, and, and now is the on the Supreme court of the United States. She needs to start being able to make her own decisions and not be told what to rule, which is his argument. I don't think she, that she was, I think she purposefully, um, just feels that, that, um, pedophilia is not a not a serious crime um but even if he was right that oh well it's just because they told her this and they told her that and she that still tells me she can't make up her own mind she can't think for herself and that's a problem on the supreme court because you're on you're in the highest in one of the nine highest positions in the land even the president has to answer to the supreme court but what's so bizarre about this though is that Part of the argument, if you watch when Ted Cruz was, was discussing with her, he actually brought up a chart of her sentencings and all that sort of stuff. And it wasn't – like this guy just made it sound like she was talking with the prosecutor and the defense and all that sort of stuff and going, what's an appropriate sentence and da da da, da. She was consistently giving under what the prosecution was asking for, which was under the guideline sentencing. So she was under all of that. So don't tell me it was in discussions with the prosecutor of what an appropriate sentencing would be because she was going under that, well under that by a, by a wide margin in a lot of cases. So yeah. this guy's just fabricating stuff to tr this. Is, you know how, how bad idolatry is your brain. This is your brain on idolatry is where you just start making stuff up so that you can take the opportunity to twist scripture. Like it's just just so many so many layers of bad that have gone into that clip. So let's let's talk about the actual use of that story, the precope adultery. Um, <clears throat> when when he starts to apply it, he says, "You see, Jesus, just like she was making an exception because of the individual taking into account the individual, Jesus was making an exception to the law to kill an adulterer." because of the individual. Is that a fair uh, interpretation? Nope. Nope, it's not. You know why? It doesn't tell me anything about the individual here. Even, even if we're trying to see, okay, so why is it 
you know what this text doesn't say? Anything about why Jesus did this. Except for perhaps to teach uh, the Pharisees a lesson about um, their own sinfulness and not to, to be too judgmental on others. But all this is, again, for for the theology buffs, granting for the sake of conversation that this is this is scriptural canonical. All this is is a story about Jesus' right to be merciful to whom he will be merciful to and have mercy on a woman who deserves death just like the rest of us do, um, though not maybe for the same crimes. Yeah, so here's what I'm taking away from it. Jesus, even if I steal man their argument, even if I steal man this argument and say, yes, Jesus um, took into account the individual and decided that in this case to to uh, that the law didn't, you know, the law the, to, to lower the sentence, which God doesn't do. He is just. The only way sentences are lowered is if they're in, in, um, if they're satisfied some other way. Um, it, we are all sentenced to death and eternity in hell. Right. Uh, they must be satisfied another way. This is why in the Old Testament, when you committed a sin, you would bring a a, a lamb because it was pro it was showing the Israelites that that God's justice must be satisfied. And if it's not satisfied in you, it's got to be satisfied another way. Um, so, but anyway, even if Jesus did do that here in this example, which he didn't, it would ruin theology if he did. But even if he did change the sentence for her specifically, he's God and it's his law. So even if he had done that, it'd be very different from Katanji Brown Jackson, who is supposed to be a judge who's supposed to be upholding the law, not saying I don't like the law and changing it. So that's a big, gigantic, enormous difference. And actually, if she is acting like Jesus, the law giver, right, when she is supposed to be a judge of the law, then she is a bad judge. That is not what yeah. judges do, change the law uh, because of the individual. That's, you know, if, if a rapist comes in and says, listen, I'm, I'm a really good person. Yes, I did rape a woman, but otherwise I'm a really good person. And the judge says, you know what? I'm going to let you go because I really like you. That's a bad judge. And we use this example all the time when we're giving people the gospel, talking about how God is a just judge. Here, Katanji Brown Jackson almost literally did that. I mean, she, she said, I really, in this guy's argument anyway. I really like, you know, this person is what his argument is. And so because I like this person, I think they're a good person. I'm going to ignore the law and give them a lower sentence than what they deserve just because I like the person. That is a bad judge. That is yeah. really good reason to, to reject and in her. Fact, in fact, actually, this just brought to mind because what he's suggesting here um, is that it's based on, you know, the person... It, it, there's a term for that. It's called respect of persons. And actually, Leviticus 19 talks about this. Um, the, uh, ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness, righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. In other words, equal standards across the board. If the story in John was about Jesus saying there's something about this woman, which means the law doesn't apply to her. He would be breaking the Old Testament law. This is not the case. It is they commit this crime. The law says this result. So that isn't what we're seeing about Jesus. It has nothing to do with her. It has nothing to do with the woman. There's nothing about the woman that the text says has anything to do with why Jesus says what he does. And yet this man's trying to say, Katanji Brown Jackson, her, judge, her judgments were given because of the particulars of the person. That's called respecter of person. They broke a law. They deserve the punishment, period. Yeah. All right. This last one um, on, on from, from this clip is from Emmanuel... AME, no, Little Rock AME Zion Church. Here we go. I meant to say this Sunday uh, when I preached about the woman caught in the act of adultery, and I thought it was important to deal with that, particularly as we looked at what was happening on Capitol Hill with Judge Brown Jackson uh, being drilled by the Senate, how they treated her, and how. Um, and how it was that uh, Senator Booker came to her rescue and spoke and reminded her and empowered her and, and inspired her 
uh, to, to stay the course because what you're doing, uh, you have a greater purpose beyond this moment. And God is all in this. Um, I thought about the woman who was treated so terribly by those people who threw her at Jesus' feet and how Jesus, just as Cory Booker did, spoke life into her and said, where are your accusers? Is no one here to condemn you? Neither will I go your way. Now, this is an interesting switch up here. Now, um, Katanji Brown Jackson isn't taking the place of Jesus in the story. Rather, she's taking the place of a woman who was condemned because she had committed the, the crime of adultery. And uh, Cory Booker is Jesus, who speaks life to her and says, God has got you and uh, God is all in this. But here's the thing. God was not all in what that woman had done. She was wrong. She was a sinner. And what this guy is actually roundabout admitting is that what Katanji Brown Jackson did in letting these, uh, in letting these, this, this child molester off with a incredibly short sentence was equal to committing the sin of adultery. It was a sin. It was wrong. And that we just need to forgive her for it. He's actually admitted that in this sermon by making her the woman in, uh, in adultery. Here's the thing. Um, notice the poisoning in the well about the text itself. This is not a man who has any respect for the Old Testament law, apparently. Why do I say that? Because these people who the awful took people. her and treated her yeah. horribly. What do you think the Old Testament law said they should do to her and the man she was committing adultery with? Uh, it's a lot worse than what happens in the text. They should stone her. According, they're they're right about the Mosaic law is that she should be stoned. Now, whether or not the man should have been there, matter of exegesis and things like that, not the discussion right now. But the standard was to stone this woman. It's it's not like that was a bad thing that they were saying should be done. There might have been a greater purpose that Jesus is trying to teach here. Again, granting that this, this is an original reading. But making this comparison where she's the woman taking an adultery, you're right, is granting she's guilty before the law. Um, and again, uh, this whole this whole poisoning in the well again of they grilled her and da-da-da-da. That's what they're supposed to do. She wants to be on the highest court in the land. What do you want them to just say, hey, she's black, she's a woman, don't know what that is, but she's a black woman, so... Looks good enough for me. Is that really what we've come to in this culture? Where that's that's all that either side should have done is just said, hugs and kisses, open arms. Don't look into your history. Don't look into your past. Don't ask any questions. Just just uh, say, when can you start? Yeah. Well, we got a couple minutes left, Justin. So um, let's let's play just a, a, a few of the clips that uh, our brother or brother or sister, whoever's running woke preacher clips. Um, whatever, um, they, they've been working really hard, whoever it is. Um, and they've put up a lot of clips. We're going to play a couple of the clips of woke preachers responding to the, what is a woman question? And really they're just going to get mad that they belittle that, that, uh, uh Marsha Blackburn belittled K Katanji in, uh, in even asking the question. Katanji Brown Jackson, it was ridiculous what they put her through. Amen. This was President Biden's nominee for the Supreme Court. She had been a federal judge of the United States Court of Appeals of the District of Columbus Circuit Court for tw since 2001. She attended college and law school at Harvard and graduated magna cum laude. Amen. She was more than qualified. Her, her mama was a high school principal. Her father was a lawyer and she excelled, amen, at Harvard, one of the top Ivy League colleges or university in our nation. But the problem was she was black. Come on, somebody. You might want to say amen. The problem is she's black, number one. And then number two, she's a woman. And so they made it hard for her, and they asked her some stupid questions. One of them even asked her, what, it is, what is a female? Did anybody watch the hearing? They asked her, what is a female? She should have said, your mama. <laughs> I 
I mean, insulting her intelligence. Here's a woman who has graduated from law school, from Harvard, magnum cum laude, and you gonna ask her what is a female, and you're looking at a female sitting in front of you with a husband? Uh, they asked her what is a woman, and she couldn't say a female. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like he's trying to say this is such a dumb, obvious question. It's like, but she couldn't answer it. But she couldn't That's answer it. That's the point. That's you're calling her dumb now. Because yeah. she couldn't answer the easy question. Oh. oh. <laughs> this next guy seems to know. Like, he seems to know that this is terrible. They tried to trip her up with many questions. One question that stood out to me was they asked her, did she know what the difference was between a man and a woman? And I honed in on her response because I knew she knew what a man and a woman was. But she chose to take the method. So does everyone. I said scientists know, biology know. She, no one can she get didn't the question right. It was define. the difference. That's a, as far as what I saw. Now, if y'all saw something different, but that's what I recall. And I began to think about that. And I said, Lord. All of the critics on the news was talking about that. And they, they, they was just putting her down because of her response. As a matter of fact, even on my job, there was one that was trying to convince me. Uh, and, and he wanted to do that by suggesting to me he can't believe that that's how she would respond. But, 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 but when I begin to think about that, I begin to pray about that. And I begin, I said, it's amazing how some people can miss all the great things you've done. And because you don't respond the way that they think you should. Notice how he's just kind of skipping the. He's like, you know, well, it isn't interesting how you can miss all the great things. Oh, all the great things like, uh, you know, under sentencing uh, child molesters. You know, that, that's not that's a great thing, right, that, that she's done. Oh, supporting abortion, uh, the murder, the, the, uh, the genocide of children in America. Um, you know, yeah, so we should we should overlook all of those great things <laughs> no i mean look this is what happens when you try to get on the supreme court when you're nominated to be on the supreme court you are going to be questioned or you should be questioned vigorously about legitimate things that are going to come before the court like what is a woman this is a question that's going to come to the supreme court very soon um, what about abortion? That's going to come to the Supreme Court very, very soon. Um, how about, um, you know, your position on, uh, pedophilia? That's going to be the next letter added to the LGBTQIA plus thing, right? Um, these are is serious issues that she will be dealing with on the Supreme Court. These are legitimate questions. Nobody is, is asking the wrong question when they ask, what is a woman? And when she answers, I'm not a biologist, she declares to the entire world that biology does define womanhood. And the, she's not even smart enough to know that much about biology, which literally, as this preacher mentioned, everybody knows. Yeah, two things. First of all, uh, no one's getting the question right. It wasn't, what's the difference between a man and a woman? It was... Can you define a woman for me? Uh, secondly, he says, and it, it appeared to me that she 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 obviously knows the difference between them. Really? Because she said she didn't. She said, I can't define what a woman is. I cannot do it. I can't. I cannot. I'm not a biologist, so I cannot give you that answer. So this so guy is, once again, like we've seen a theme here, making up history. She did not say that. And and by the way, this is why this guy presents himself as very well-spoken, very intellectual, and very measured in his approach. Don't be fooled by that. Don't be fooled by it. The way people say things can be very dangerous because a lot of people get intimidated. Look at what they're standing on and what they're saying, and you'll see the truth. Yeah. And, now, and, and by the way, I did like this guy better than all the other preachers we've listened to. Yeah. But it's yep. clear that he was he had a, he had a target he was aiming for and he was going to get there by hell or high water. It didn't really matter uh, whether it was biblical or righteous or, or not. Guys, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us on Point of View, and we will see you next time.